everyone. I thought I would come on here and give you a reading update. Um, just a kind of general one. I'm very busy at work, but um, still, whenever I have time, I, I uh, read, <laughs> as we all do, even if we're busy. Um, I love how our reading just sort of, there's almost like this inv invisible thread and you get pulled along in certain directions. And I do kind of love that. And I, I sort of am leaning into that more. Um, there are a couple of things that I'm still working on, but haven't had a time, uh, including a book that I have put on hold, but still consider myself reading for most of the year. <laughs> and I'll come back to those later on when I have more time. Uh, and But I, what I mean by more time is when the semester is, is winding down, which will be Thanksgiving. It will already, already be winding down in terms of actual teaching work. And so I, I will give you an update on those things later on. And so what has happened with my reading is, so in terms of Victoria, it's sort of, that has wound down a little bit too. I'm not in the mood for some of my Victoria picks that I had, but you know, I, they're still there. But I'm still enjoying um, The Last Chronic of Barsetshire. Barset, I always say Barsetshire, but The Last Chronic. And it's, it's going slowly, but it's going, I really like the character, the Crawley, the put upon um but really really smart but eccentric fellow that seems to be the center of at least the beginning part of the novel he's a great character i i just yeah i don't want to talk too much because i don't know about you but when people get into the uh, intric intricacies of plots of, of of books i often stop the video because if it's a book i'm interested in i don't really I'm, I'm, and and the thing is, I I say I don't care about spoilers, so it's kind of a, a bit of a contradiction. So an example of that, and this is just something that occurs to me, when we're what, getting ready to watch a TV show, like on a on a service like Netflix, my husband will always read the synopsis, and sometimes he'll even go and find out more about the episode. And I never want to do that because I want to just be exposed to the episode. I don't want to know about it ahead of time in most cases actually almost always so it's just kind of an observation that I have so that's why I think I tend to when I t describe things it's more my feelings about it or just general co comments about how great characters are not the the intricacies of the plot unless I don't I think it won't matter or something anyway it's just and it's all that's all very intuitive I don't really think about how I'll talk about things as you could tell <laughs> it all just pops out let's see where was I with my reading so that's going well and I think I was a um, bit swayed by one of my commenters uh, saying that they were interested in the Laura Ingalls Wilder reread project which is forming and I think I am going to do it in it'll also be a winter project um to reread all of the books in order you know starting with uh, Little House of Big in Big Woods but, you know, we are entering into nonfiction November and I've had this this wonderful book that I just started reading on my shelf because I was thinking, well, if I'm going to read Laura Ingalls Wilder, I should read this, what I think is going to be a fantastic, and I know people have loved this book, and I've started it and it is fantastic. And what's fantastic about it, right in the beginning, is you get the sort of other side of the story of, of the pioneers, which is that of the indigenous people who have lived here forever and who were really, really mistreated badly, terribly by the white man we have to say it that way but the intricacies of how they come to intertwine with each other's cultures and all that good stuff and then i think this book is going to go back and forth between kind of sharing that history and then going into laura ingalls and how her history fits in with that and i think it's fine to do both to to be to just still love the novels and and, and as literature and you know which I will always do, but also kind of get the sense that, because I learned so much about um, the area of the big woods specifically, and there's this war that happened there, the Dakota and the, you know, settlers. There was a group of German settlers who they had bad interactions with, and, um, you know, just kind of, it's a story of the colonizer colonizing and doing, you know, terrible things to the people who were already there who in turn did not so nice things back, of course, you know. Anyway, but it's it's really well done. And what was interesting, as I was rereading this, just sort of starting to read it, not rereading, she, so she has a lot, a lot of notes, a lot of footnotes. It's very well sourced. And one of the people that she mentions, um, we have, the, we have a, a copy of this person's books, 
and it is George Catlin. So the the he's mainly apparently uh, he's a bit of an interesting fellow, but mainly known for his um, uh, portraits of Native Americans. And so I have two volumes here. Unfortunately, the volumes are a little bit messed up because there are pages missing, which is kind of I just discovered this so, um, and. Um, just fantastic uh, images of and descriptions of the Native Americans. And she footnotes him at least a couple times, if not more. And he's a really interesting person because he was sort of an early, he had a kind of more benevolent view of the Native Americans and he kind of had a less benevolent view of the white man coming in. She has this great quote in the back or in the front, I don't remember about how the white man kind of came in and ruined, it, ruined everything for them um, in this sort of destiny type way. Uh, anyway, fascinating uh, background. And so, you know, why did why did this, the German professor have these books on her shelf? <laughs> because she's married to someone, and that someone is my husband. And he was a, he's kind of a he was not, not so much anymore a hobby historian. And he and and I will confess that he's also a lot. Of, he's a Wikipedian. He's someone who used to more write stuff on Wikipedia. But he, you know, he's also you know very well, very. He's a better writer than I am, and a smart guy. So you know, stuff by him is good. And she was specifically interested in Michigan, as I remember, and even sort of Michigan legislature, so really arcane, you know, unless you're interested in Michigan, but apparently Michigan's fascinating. And um, he would go around and he uh, he acquired quite a few books on history. And I think this is where these came from, I'm assuming. And, and they're not, we he didn't read them cover to cover. They're more like a reference thing and they will be, but I'm sort of glad we have them. Uh, because of being able to dip in and find out more about this, these wonderful, diverse groups of people that often get lumped in together. For example, apparently, according to Caroline Fraser from Prairie Fires, even the word Sioux for, for is is a bit insulting because the Dakota were different groups of people and they get lumped together and called something, which is, you know, that's what humans do. But um, I just thought it was kind of interesting that uh, I start reading this and then I and then she then we happen to have some of the stuff that she talks about, which you which you would you know more likely be able to find in a library. I guess we have a sort of a library, a kind of eclectic. Un... But he actually when we moved, he did sort of put it all into a he bought a, a scanner thing for the ISBN numbers. So you know, and, and we were on. Tell me if you know about library thing versus which is much more sort of. A resource of your books as opposed to Goodreads, which I hate the new interface of Goodreads. It's so uh, difficult now to check that you have the right edition and find the edition that you're listening to or, or reading. I hate good. I've never really cared for it that much, but and it's still I I haven't had time to check out Storygraph or anything, so I still use Goodreads just as my repository of where to put stuff. So it's really great. And um, that's where my reading has gone, mainly for that. And then so what happened was I finished Labyrinth's Daughter and I loved it and I was listening to it and reading it. One thing that's happening with my listening and, and that is that I have really uh, decided I love reading and listening together. And the reason, and, and sometimes I have to do that. And so, so I was scrounging around for my next listen you know, the thing I listen to while I do my chores. <laughs> and I honed in on Homer. <laughs> I honed in on Homer. Because I have, to my dying shame, whatever, never read the Iliad. Even though I read and taught the Odyssey. I don't even know how that happens, but it does. And I start, I found this amazing audible version of Derek Jacoby. Remember I, Claudius, old older f folks out there? I loved I, Claudius. I like, actually wouldn't mind reading the book, I, Claudius. Anyway, he was amazing in that uh, old BBC show. And I just love his voice. I just love Derek Jacoby. And the audible of him reading the Iliad is amazing. Amazing, even though, you know, it's, it's the Iliad. It's about a bunch of men fighting each other and gods. The god stuff's kind of interesting. And I do love the prose. And, like, the the women are just these prizes that are kind of... They just they don't have any agency, apparently. At least, not yet. But what happened with is that I couldn't just listen to it. I, I just don't know enough about my Greeks. I don't... The names, the list of names, and who's talking, and what they're saying. And then a god comes in, and then... 
and I'm and I tend to sort of want to you know find out more about everything. So I need to read it and listen, which means it's not really, it's going to be more of a read than a listen. So it's on hold. It's another one that's on hold because um, of time, you know. And I'm, you see how scattered I am with my reading, but I'm still enjoying myself, so I don't really care that I'm not kind of that focused right now. So it's still on the docket. And the thing is, while I was listening to it, it was sort of going very swiftly. And so the um, the auto, I sort of, it was hard for me to believe that the audible is not abridged. And then, so what happens is when he reads his stuff, it's not abridged, but then a, a, a female voice narrator comes in. And I, I'm sorry, I don't know her name. I haven't cut, I'll, I'll have to supply her name. And her stuff seems to be, a bridge. She jumps around more. I don't know why. I don't know how they've set this up because it is the Fagel's translation. It's it's exactly word for word when he says his stuff, but then she comes in and says stuff, and it's like oh, a few pages later on, and it's not clear from the audible description that it is like that. But so I'll have to get into it more. And at some point, you know, I I do I do want to sort of spend time figuring out what's what they're skipping and going back because you know I'm a bit of a completionist. So that happened. So it's just a, it was an audible and now it's something I want to read. So it's on hold. So I needed another audible. <laughs> you know, I'm always like looking around. And you know what I, I fell into? And I'm so happy I did. Because first of all, Victober. And uh, there are noises in the background. It's probably laundry. Shuba playing the trout. <laughs> Sorry. Bleak House. Oh my gosh, I fell into Bleak House and it's so amazing. I love it so much already. I'm not even very far along, but Esther, my heart belongs to Esther. I love it so much. It's just, and I know it's going to get all convoluted and jarndous and jarndous, but, and I know I've, I heard, I've read about, I actually, a long time ago, I think because my mother had strange interests because she was a writer, I think I read a whole book about spontaneous combustion and I think that Bleak House has a, has a case of it. And um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> so strange, but uh, amazing. So tell me if you've read Bleak House. It's going to be probably my favorite Dickens, although I did love David Copperfield. See, I started listening to Great Expectations, but with Great Expectations, what happened was I know the plot so well. I've seen that movie, uh, the British movie, and we even live next to the, the child actor who played Pip in the old version in Australia because he moved to Australia, Tony Wager. So I had the sense of knowing it too well to really get a lot out of it listening to it, or that was my sense. I was sort of annoyed with listening to it. But Bleak House, I think we had seen the, the one with what's-her-name, X-Files lady in it, Gillian Anderson. But I don't remember it that well. And I have a feeling that one I, I was probably missed stuff from the book. And the book is just so all these side characters that are hilarious to listen to and their little exploits. And he's just such a, he's such a great writer. I mean, he's Dickens. He's Dickens, you know. He's just... You know, there's a reason why he's canonical, I think, for for some things, not for everything. So yeah, I'm listening to Bleak House. I'm reading Caroline Fraser. I'm, and it's sort of like, I like to start nonfiction early. I actually have another nonfiction book that I might tell you about another time. I haven't started it yet, but I, I acquired it. It's small niche because it's an actual German studies book. So it's scholarly. And, uh, but it's still interesting enough and it plays into some of the things um, I'm interested in and may maybe some of you are interested in too. So if I talk about it in a general way, maybe you'll get something out of it. Um, I think that's about it. It's sort of like, I feel like I should have started the little house books. And I did start Little Big Woods, but then I want to kind of just be able to read it all one going. Cause they're, you know, so short, the, the early ones should go, I should be able to read them in a day. Some of them, I mean, when I have time, when I'm not frazzled and busy with work. So yeah, that's where my reading is. It's a bit all over the place, but I'm enjoying myself despite being super busy at work or just kind of normal busy, but to me that's super busy. <laughs> but it, but also kind of uh, looking forward to the quiet time of a break where I can regenerate and recoup and be cozy and read all the things in a more kind of structured way. So I'm looking forward to that too. And maybe making some but sort of, I still have this idea of making a reading vlog and I'm resisting the idea of vlogmas um because i should resist it <laughs> unless someone tells me otherwise <laughs> i hope everyone's doing well and i'll talk to you another time bye bye